The Loki series was an abomination. I'm just some goose with a YouTube channel, so it's certain I don't know what I'm talking about. But maybe if this show had done what I suggest, it would not have been the 16th worst thing I've ever seen in my life. It'd be the 18th. I was part of a podcast with Connor Nielsen where we got into this contemptible series in great detail, so check that out for a lengthy explanation for why nothing in this series makes any sense. I can forgive one or two things that don't make sense, but this series is built out of things that do not make sense. I cannot fix the series that exists since every aspect of this series is broken. You ask one perfectly rational question about plot or character motivation or how this world works and it leads to a dozen other questions. It's like taking blocks out of a Jenga tower. Eventually, the whole thing is going to fall apart. It'd be easier to create a brand new premise this series should have followed. My suggestion isn't that complicated. Somebody said a series about Loki traveling through time and space needed to be jawed droppingly cataclysmic, and I think they should have gone in the opposite direction. Don't focus on the ramifications this will have on the MCU for years to come, or which elements need to be set up for future use down the line. Instead, focus on Loki as a character, moving from point A to point B, and the adventures he gets into along the way should and mape him into the person you want him to be by the end. Do a buddy cop show, but it's time cops fixing things across time and space. That's it. Look at the series Almost Human. One human, one robot, various adventures where we see the two grow friendlier as the series continues. I don't know, I didn't see it. Do that with Loki. Loki from 2012 is still a power-hungry murderer who hasn't had the character development the Loki we know and love has had. You want that guy to be a little cuddlier so he can fit into the heroic mold a little better. That might be a little difficult to do in six episodes, but since the Disney Plus shows aren't at a set number of episodes per season, you could stretch this out a little further. The show would start the same way it did, with Owen Wilson recruiting Loki. There's no no Lady Loki causing ripples, necessitating Owen Wilson recruiting Loki specifically. Instead, all time travelers looking to cause a mess are given the option of helping fix the timeline or getting zapped into nothingness. Loki chooses survival. He thinks he can get away, use this time tech to his advantage, and get back to a life of conquest. But Owen Wilson points out where that led the main timelines, Loki. Mother died, father died, Asgard died, Thor was so depressed all his so-called friends treated him like crap. Loki is devastated. This is not what he wanted. Even though he he fought with them a lot, he did not want his family, his people, to die. If he made different choices, would they have lived? This kicks him into trying to be a better person. He's still the old cranky Loki, just no longer with his sights set on conquest. Each episode can have Loki and his partner dealing with some time crisis that frames Loki's character building. The person at the center of this week's adventure reminds Loki of something he did back on Asgard, and in addition to stopping time from folding in on itself, Loki helps this guy to be a better person. You can still build to a big finale all the episodes add up to, but your priority is to focus on character growth and each episode developing that. Everybody wants to produce their big magnum opus that is huge and world-breaking, but if you can't handle that, it'd be better if you try something smaller first. So we're not doing Sylvie. Instead, Kang can and should be our main villain. Just two paragraphs ago, I said this Loki has given up on conquest. Kang's whole thing is conquest. See, it's right there in his epithet. This series wanted it to be a big surprise, like, aha, you weren't expecting this were you? But they announced Jonathan Majors would be Nathaniel Richards, Kang's civilian identity, over half a year before Loki's first episode. See, I twerted about it. So, not much of a surprise. Maybe other people were surprised I wasn't. So, be upfront with it. While Loki and Owen Wilson are bonding, Loki becoming a little more heroic each episode, they're chasing after Kang. First episode, we see him, there's no mystery nonsense about who the bad guy is. Why and what is Kang doing? In Endgame, Hulk made it pretty clear you cannot alter the past. So, why why does this guy bother? Let's borrow from the hit TV series Fringe, so spoilers for that one. In that show, Walter Bishop's son Peter died, so Walter moseys on over to another dimension and takes that Peter. Say Kang lost his gal, and in trying to go back to his own past to prevent this, he couldn't make it work. A little Guy Pierce time machine in there for you. What's Kang's next option? It makes me want to gag to even say this, but go to another dimension and insert himself in that one so he can resume his life with his lady. But each dimension is a little different, and if he tries to replace the king of this reality so he can have his girlfriend for himself, he's eventually going to make a mistake and mention something about Batman being a founding member of the Avengers and she'll look at him like he's crazy. He's been to thousands of dimensions looking for one that is most similar to his and he's jumping all over time making tiny alterations here and there to make this dimension more closely resemble his home. Does this fit with what Hulk said in Endgame? Hmm, maybe? King isn't altering his past but rather someone else's so maybe he could make changes 
changes to other timelines to suit his own goals. Kang either doesn't know that his actions are endangering not just the lives of everyone in this timeline, but in all the others, because gobbledygook, or he doesn't care, as long as he can get his old life back. Along the way to getting what he wants, he's amassed armies, stole technologies that will help him more easily alter this reality to fit his goal, thus the conquest, but it's not his ultimate goal like it often seems to be in the comics. And you can parallel Loki to Kang. Loki also lost his family, and at some point in this season, you could have an episode where Loki has a chance to talk to Thor or his mother or father. It could damage the timeline if he does that, but it'd be so tempting for him to say something like Zig instead of Zag for their own benefit. But Loki chooses self-sacrifice, even at the cost of his family. He doesn't interact with them, while King continues to wreck everything because he's so close to his goal. Even if he sees that he is damaging the timeline, if he acknowledges this, then all the death and destruction he's caused up until now would have been for nothing. Eventually, Loki and Owen Wilson are able to stop Kang, and everything seems pretty normal. Loki is ready to continue fixing what needs fixing. Things are rainbows and sunshine. Twist ending. Owen Wilson isn't who he said he was. Instead of him being Agent Mobius, he's Arthur Zarko, who in the comics has a pretty similar backstory to Kang. He comes from a pretty rosy time period and comes to the past to wreck stuff. People who watch these shows think they are so clever. I googled this character's name. He's a bad guy in the comics, so they must be setting him up to be a villain in a show. Like Lex in Smallville, he starts good and gradually descends into darkness. You could hint at that. Everyone in the TVA is someone who time traveled when they shouldn't have. Maybe this guy felt he had a good reason, like Kang. But twist, Arthur Zarko is just an alias. After Loki walks out of the room, Owen Wilson pushes a button, making the hologram disappear, revealing Jonathan Majors. He's Immortus. It's difficult to suggest changes for something so recent, with more still to come. Until season two and Ubu Bobu comes out, it's impossible to know if my suggestions here would fly in the face of whatever they've got planned or fit neatly with it. Immortus can smile and hold up an item they confiscated from Kang. You still get a holy cow ending, one that hints at big things to come, and leaves some questions to be answered. Is this the same Kang Owen Wilson and Loki just spent a season chasing, but with more experience and he has a good reason for foiling his past self's plans? Or is this the Kang from this reality, and he has his own scheme? Are the TVA really as benevolent as Owen told Loki? Or are they unwittingly agents of Immortus, helping him move the cosmos into his own preferred order? They may plan to do something like this in Ant-Man 3, with Jonathan Majors playing a different version of Kang, so this could play right into that, with this Immortus being the antagonist in that movie. I still don't know if I would love this version. I still would rather the MCU stay away from the multiverse and, after such a whiz-bang endgame, do smaller, more character-driven stories for a while. But, in my humble, this would be a more character-driven series, positioning Loki to be a different person, organically arriving at that place. Hopefully, you guys like this one, and if you did, stick around. I do videos like this all the time. In the meantime, have a great rest of your day. Catch you later.